Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to St. James's Church this morning for our service of Holy Communion. On the 9th of April, His Royal Highness the Duke of Edinburgh died at the age of 99, and the Royal Family joined with people around the world in mourning for his loss. Prince Philip has given outstanding service to our nation, Commonwealth, and our Church. He has been the principal support for Her Majesty the Queen during years of stability and prosperity that characterises her reign. So let us begin our service with a prayer for the world. God of our lives, we give thanks for the long life of Prince Philip, for all that he has contributed to our nation and beyond, and for his support for our Queen. We pray that he will be at rest trusting in the grace of God. We remember before you Her Majesty the Queen and her family, praying that they will know your comfort and strength in the days to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. The grace, mercy and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, 
blameless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Hear us and help us. We have lived in this world alone and doubted our own. In your mercy, forgive us. Hear us and help us. And may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by the Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Forgive the people that stand to say the glory of great in the Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God of God, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect for the Second Sunday of Easter. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Gospel reading is from St. John, chapter 20, starting at verse 19. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone his sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Take 
may receive the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. We could say that this is Thomas Sunday, as the Gospel reading tells us of the story of Jesus' special appearance among his apostles to greet Thomas. And there's much to appreciate about him and much we can learn from him. The first thing to learn is about the disciples and faith. The second is about doubt in general. Let's start with Thomas's unfortunate ad adjective. He's always called doubting, as if the other disciples had more faith than he did. And that made Thomas a bit of a problem. But it didn't work that way. Was the problem with Thomas or was it with the others? Remember what happened. For one reason or another, Thomas was not with the others on Easter morning. The Bible doesn't say why, but perhaps he had company that weekend. So Thomas didn't share their experience of the risen Lord. That meant they had something that he didn't. And instead of their experience, what Thomas had was their word about what they had seen. And that wasn't enough. You see, Thomas never doubted Jesus, he doubted the other apostles. The problem was not really Thomas, the problem was the credibility of the others. They had seen the risen Jesus, they had been given his peace and his spirit, they had been sent by him to continue his work in the world. We heard all of that in the first part of the Gospel. It was now up to these witnesses to share the good news. That's what they were sent to do. And bless their hearts, their witness to the resurrection was not even compelling enough to convince Thomas. And Thomas wanted to believe. And he was ready to believe. Is that the same way it is now? Is the temptation to say that the problem is out there with all those unbelievers like Thomas? If they would only shape up and believe better, then things would improve immeasurably. Is it easier to complain about them than it is to pay careful attention to the less than persuasive words and lives of us disciples today? Of those of us who are called to be witnesses to Jesus, it feels better to call Thomas doubting than to call the disciples or ourselves unconvincing. But Thomas is here to make us uncomfortable, not to smug. Remember, faith almost always comes to people through the faith of others, through the life and ministry of the church. Virtually everyone out there is like Thomas. Virtually everyone out there, and that includes our children and grandchildren, depends upon people who already believe to point them towards faith. Virtually everyone out there, and that includes our children and grandchildren, depends upon us working with the Holy Spirit. The other disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord, but they were scared. They were hiding behind locked doors. They were only talking to each other. Just a week earlier, Jesus had stood among them. But you couldn't tell it from them. They sure didn't act like something wonderful had happened at Easter. So Thomas didn't believe them, even though he wanted to. That's the way it was, and all too often that's the way it still is. Was Thomas the problem, or those like him in our society? Has the authenticity, the power, and the persuasiveness of the church got anything to do with it? But there is good news here as well. Good news for Thomas, for the disciples, and so for us. For Christ is risen. And he comes to us. Risen, he comes to the church, even when the church continues to huddle in fear behind locked doors. 
and he brings to completion the work that a weak and sinful collection of disciples cannot do alone. Work that we cannot do alone. The good news is that Jesus continues to be with us, that he continues to be for us, and that he continues to speak to us and to his world, his words of forgiveness and peace. This doesn't mean that we are off the hook. It doesn't mean we have no responsibilities and no vocation to service. It doesn't mean that Jesus will do it all for us and we can take it easy. It doesn't mean that we are able to continue. It does mean we are able to continue warts and all in hope and in confidence. It does mean both that we are not alone and that we do not need to be afraid. Sometimes we fail as the disciples failed with Thomas. But we don't stop and we don't give up. And we are free to do our best, even if it's risky. While there is always room for improvement, there is never cause for despair. We continue to struggle together going forward, and Jesus continues to be found among us. The heart of the story of doubting Thomas is not about doubt, Thomas's or anyone else's. It's about the call of the church to witness to the resurrection. And the biggest piece of good news is not that Thomas comes to faith. The biggest bit of good news is that the risen Christ still comes to his church. The good news is for us. We are called to be witnesses to the resurrection and our Lord is with us. At the same time, we can't let Thomas slip by us without something said about doubt. Real personal, bone deep doubt as to the truth or value of parts or all of this whole religious enterprise. First of all, doubt is always a part of the life of faith. There is never authentic faith without doubt. That's something I'm sure we all know about. And doubt is not at all a bad thing. It is a necessary thing. Doubt happens often in times of crisis and tragedy. Sometimes just all by its own self. Faith matures with ups and downs and not in a straight line. Well, let's consider one tiny thing about doubt, ours and his, that we can learn from Thomas today. Did we notice that Jesus did not come to Thomas while Thomas was on the way to work or walking the dog or playing around in bond? or just thinking things over. Jesus came to Thomas when Thomas was with the disciples, when he was in the fellowship of believers. Thomas was smart, he didn't believe the disciples, but he did stay with them. He knew that if his doubt were ever to be met, it would be met there, not somewhere else. That's usually the way it is with us. Our doubts are usually met as we stay with the community of faith, as we hang out, doing all sorts of things that we would be doing if we weren't bothered or overwhelmed with doubt. It was a good thing and not a hypocritical thing for Thomas to stay with the others, even when he didn't believe a single word that they said. So it is for us. That's a very real connection between hanging around with people of faith in churches and living his life and the gift of meeting the Lord. That connection isn't simple, and it isn't exact, and it isn't at all predictable, but we can depend on it. It will come to us through whatever doors we lock, through whatever barriers we build. Sometimes, as it must have been with Thomas, what turns out to be the greatest moment of faith doesn't feel like faith at all. It can feel like doubt. Sometimes what turns out to be the greatest moment of faith feels like just hanging on and just showing up. It feels like waiting and going through the motions, but that's all right. Sometimes that's just the way it works. And that was what Thomas needed to do. It was all that Thomas needed to do, was just show up and be with the rest. 
and Jesus met him there. Jesus did do the best, and it still works that way. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. So let's stand to declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Please be seated as Carolyn leads us in our prayer to this morning. Let us see heaven. Faith of God, we praise you for the resurrection of your Son Jesus Christ from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all the Christian people that we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the world we have in, for those who lead and take important decisions. For those who follow the Lord and for those who also have their voice. We pray for mercy and justice, compassion and integrity. We pray for protection against evil and strengthening our goodness. We also pray for unity among Christians, that they may work together to spread the word of hope to the world of despair. We pray for unity among all people of faith throughout the world, that they may respect each other's beliefs and celebrate what they have. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who have been involved in the fight against COVID-19. We pray especially for the healthcare workers of the United States, and for scientists and researchers working on the development of vaccines. We pray that we will overcome this global crisis, and that after this pandemic, we build a more just and humane world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord God, and for our church here at St. James, and for all those who worship you as a family. We pray for heaven and for our few readers from our minds, as they lead us in worship each Sunday. I pray that this church can grow in numbers and in spiritual commitment to you, and the sense to follow your people too. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, as we mourn the loss of Holy Spirit, we give thanks for his life and for his love of our country and for his devotion to duty. We pray for his queen and all the world on him. Be with them all at this time of mourning and comfort them in our sorrow and grief. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray that we do not hold to the duties that there may be new awareness of one another's gifts and needs, or sensitivity and respect in our relationships. May we respect one another as fellow beings born of your creative love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, comfort, comfort and healer to those in both physical, mental and spiritual need. We bring before you those known to us personally who are in our need at this time. We name them in our hearts and at moments of silence we ask that your healing touch may be felt in their lives.
By his mercy, we present our whole lives and gifts to God as a living sacrifice. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God. For Christ has risen from the tomb and scattered the darkness of death with a light that will not fade. The risen Lord walks with your gathered people, unfolds for us your word and makes himself known in the breaking of the bread. And so with choirs of angels, with all the heavenly hosts, we proclaim your glory and, your, and join their unending song of praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. So we come then to the table of the Lord. We come with faith and with thanksgiving. blood of Christ shed for you.
Jesus Christ, and with all who love him in earth and heaven. Strengthen us by his presence, so that we can serve you faithfully all our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.